Today is Respect Life Sunday, and our readings this Sunday are so very appropriate as we pray for and honor the right and dignity of life. From Genesis, we hear that God created man and woman and joined them together as a family. From our readings from Hebrews, they speak of the second person of the Holy Trinity becoming man to offer his life for us. Jesus is our great priest, our great high priest, offering himself as sacrifice for our sin. And then we have our gospel reading with two distinct messages from our Lord. In the first, Jesus restores marriage to its intended place of honor and permanence. And in the second is his great teaching on how each of us is to approach faith in a pure, innocent, trusting, and not childish, but childlike faith and way. As I began to prepare a homily for this Sunday, I placed all of the words from today's scripture readings and the occasion of Respect Life Sunday to prayer. As I was quiet with the Lord, I remembered how blessed I am to have three children. One is in heaven, and the other two now with families and children of their own. I remembered my mother's battle with cancer and her death. She suffered tremendously, and I recalled how I had to hold her 80-pound body down that last week of her life so that the nurses could get the IV started to relieve her pain. I thought about that last week as she was in a coma and the endless stream of family, friends, and co-workers that came to say goodbye. And it dawned on me then as now that she was still being mom to me. She was teaching me as she died how to live. She taught me from that bed where my priorities needed to be, not on the staircase of the corporate ladder, but within my relationship with my Lord and the gift of my wife and my children. And all of that reminded me of the great gift of life and the respect that we must hold for this gift. I also began to remember a Saturday just about three weeks ago here at St. Elizabeth's. And like many days at St. Elizabeth's, it was a packed and full day. The day began with Mass serving Father Larry as his deacon. And by the way, we are truly blessed parish to have this wonderful priest among us to bring us the sacraments and 52 years of pastoral wisdom and experience. Next, I met with a young couple and their newborn daughter to prepare them for the sacrament of baptism. They let me hold the little baby, which is really great. And we talked about the wonder of a newborn child. And this little child was given her body by her mom and her dad, but she was given her etern eternal soul by Almighty God. And we talked about how parents are the first and most important teachers of God and church to their precious children. And I shared that the graces that will come through baptism and all the sacraments will strengthen her for her journey through life. What a joy that is. As I reflected on this gift, I also remembered the darker side, the, the side that includes abortion. This couple chose life and the joy of seeing a child grow up and of becoming family. I remembered my junior year of high school as two of my closest friends chose abortion rather than be challenge of becoming 16-year-old parents. To this day, these two dear friends of mine have suffered from that decision, and I often pray for each and hope that they have turned to God for his forgiveness and the healing that will come from our compassionate Lord with our repentance and our faith. Later on that Saturday, I met a man who wanted to, to begin an annulment process. He had been divorced, not by his choice, for several years and was now ready to move forward. I shared what I, he could expect, and we talked about what an annulment is and what it is not. An annulment is not Catholic divorce. It is a finding that for reasons that come to light, the sacrament never took place. Even with time, 
this man was suffering from the end of his marriage. And I have learned that when someone is suffering, it is best for me to listen and to companion them. Then, a little later that afternoon, I had the honor of witnessing a wedding of a delightful young couple. It was a huge wedding. Ten bridesmaids, ten groomsmen, a flower girl, a ring bearer, parents, grandparents, and about 300 of their closest friends. Their love was very apparent. And it was an honor to give a wedding homily and to ask them to become selfless with one another. I shared with them that there is another who is also deeply in love with them. God sees the bride and the groom as his beloved children. And his grace will be within their marriage, and it's an abundant grace that they can draw from in the days and months ahead and years. At St. Elizabeth's, we have a tradition at a wedding in that we give all couples a crucifix, and we ask them to love each other as Christ has loved us. Good marriages bring God and his example into their married life. What an honor to witness their sacrament to each other. Today's scripture and these reflections of my, my mother, my marriage, my children, and this busy Saturday have shown me the depth of God's love for you and I. There is indeed a sacredness of life that we're called to honor and to protect. Our holy church is commanded by Almighty God to protect and profess the teachings of the gift of life and of the sacredness of marriage. As disciples on our own journey back home to God, we too are called to be faithful to these teachings. We're also called to be compassionate and forgiving, as our Lord is compassionate and forgiving. When we fall, there will be forgiveness and love from our Lord. There will be healing and restoration. And within the walk with the Lord, this may not always be easy. Sometimes the situation or timing of a new baby can significantly challenge a mom and a dad, or the dad is absent, which adds to the work and stress of becoming a mother. Watching someone suffer is not an easy thing. Waiting for natural death and not taking the role of God into our own hands can and must and is difficult. And I doubt that there's not one person in this church today that has not been impacted by a failed marriage. Yet, these are difficult times that enter into many lives, and yes, we will face the challenge. And we're blessed to have the guidance of our loving God through his holy church. There's great wisdom in our church from our Lord. As I conclude today, I want to end on a joyful and more happy note. At the end of today's gospel, Jesus teaches us that we need to accept the teachings in the, like the, of the kingdom of God like a child. And once again, one of my favorite reflections on the, what this means is a photograph that I treasure of my little granddaughter being thrown up into the air by my son. Her red hair is flying, her arms and legs are spread apart, and she's probably nine feet off the ground. Her face is one of absolute sheer joy, profound happiness, an absolute total trust as she's looking down at her daddy. All you can see of my son is his hands outstretched to catch her. And as I look at that little face, I see that that is what Jesus is telling us today. May each of us grow up to be children. It is now time to also mention the bishop's appeal and to talk to you a little bit about the pledge. As part of Respect Life Sunday, our church has teachings on how we also respect life by respecting the dignity and the help others may need. And our church has forever been doing this. And your gift will go to help that cause. Whether you can give a little or a lot is not as important as that you prayerfully consider giving something. I ask you to, if you, you received it in the mail, if you haven't completed it, we have some on the end of the pew. If you would, take some moments to fill it out. And during the collection time, if you would pass them into the tray, we would be most appreciative of your gift. If you choose not to participate, please fill out a card anyway. 
so that you will save the volunteers from making a phone call. Our parish goal this year is $252,711.79. That 79 cents is something I think about. Wow. I love how they calculate. A successful appeal will once again help not only our diocese, but also our parish, because anything that's over that goal will help pay down our debt. In the spirit of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, thank you for your generosity.